and it happens all the time. So again, these are distinctions we need to make. Make a distinction between drug harms and drug money harms. Let's make another distinction, critically important. And that is, it makes as much sense to me to put this gifted actor Robert Downey Jr. in jail for his heroin problem. And by the way, he always will be a recovering heroin addict. He will always have that, that propensity, that craving to go back and use heroin. So he will never be recovered. Uh, he will always be recovering. But it makes as much sense to me to put Robert Downey Jr. in jail for his hair problem as it would have Betty Ford in jail for her alcohol problem. And you know Betty Ford, of course, was the wife of President Gerald Ford. It's the same thing, isn't it? It's a medical issue. It's the same thing. It's a medical issue. Bring these people closer to medical professionals that can help them instead of labeling them automatic criminals and pushing them farther away. But, here's the distinction. If Robert Downey Jr., Betty Ford, you or I drive a motor vehicle impaired by, you fill in the blank, methamphetamines, alcohol, heroin, marijuana, that's a crime. And it should be. What's the difference? Think about it. What's the difference? Now by their actions, they are putting our safety at risk. And that is a legitimate criminal justice function. Now you heard from Kyle, I am a libertarian, I'm proud to say so. And honestly, the government has as much right to control what I as an adult put into my body as it does what I put into my mind. It's none of their business. But if my actions put your safety at risk, that is a legitimate criminal justice function. And you go back and look, I am proud to say back in 1984, as a new judge on the court, I put in probably the first drug court in the history of the United States of America with regard to alcohol-related offenses. And we would figure out who the alcoholics were. We actually didn't call them that. It smacked of name-calling. I called them high-risk problem drinkers, but they knew what we meant. But you take these people and you screen them out and you actually take alcohol out of their lives. And I look at them and I meant it, and they, some of them found out I meant it. If you even eat rum cake and I find out about it, I'm going to put you in jail. And so then you would start getting letters from people. Uh, Dear Judge Gray, uh, I was going to divorce my husband. He would get drunk. He'd beat me up. He was irresponsible. He'd beat up our children. But now that he's off alcohol, you've given me my husband back. This is the man I married. Thank you. It really has made a difference in our lives. And so you come into that and you realize the alcohol does not have to be illegal in order to hold people accountable for their actions. And by the way, the same is true with regard to these other drugs as well. So if we would somehow put in a program for the regulation and the regulated distribution of these things, we would be so far better off because we can take the money out of it. Well, we'll be far ahead of the game and then we can start focusing on the remaining problems, which will be drug problems. Why people don't know this universally, I couldn't hope to tell you. The media, for some reason, has simply failed us. But and how many of you are aware of what has gone on in Portugal for the last 10 years? I see one hand. I, I, okay, three hands, thank you. Four. Yeah, better. Maybe I'll see more. Why this word has not gotten out baffles me. Portugal looked around in about the year 2000 and saw that they had the biggest drug problem of any country in the European Union. And they did something really, really smart. They impaneled a commission of non-political experts and they said, okay, you are now this commission. We want you to go out into our country and figure out what's going on. Tell us what the status is and make some recommendations. So the commission came back after a little while and said, we have two problems in our country. The first problem is the problem drug users are afraid of their own government. Why? Because if they bring their problems to the government, the government will punish them. So they take their problems underground. And the second problem we have is, is that the government is so, so 
spending so much money on investigation, prosecution, and incarceration, they don't have any money left for drug treatment. So you know what happened? In the year 2001, what, nine years ago, the year 2001, Portugal decriminalized all drugs. What happened? Well, the, Rand, the uh, Cato Institute took all of the data between 2001 and 2007, and they digested it for two years, and last year they came out with a report. And you know what they said? Drug usage nationwide stayed pretty much the same. If anything, it went down half a percent. But problem drug usage went down by 50%. Why? Because of that very reason. Now these people that had problems on their hands for their drug usage were no longer afraid of the government. They would bring their problems to the government for assistance, and since the government wasn't spending all this money on the criminal justice system, they had the money for drug treatment. Problem drug usage went down by 50%. That, first of all, gives the lie in effect, or shows how silly these comments are, that if we were to change our system, and we're going to talk about Proposition 19 in California in a minute, but if we were to strictly regulate and control marijuana or any of these other drugs, so many of these people said, oh, we've become a nation of drug zombies. Well, you know, not only is that silly, but it's really kind of insulting. Anybody that has the ability to stay away from these drugs is going to stay away from them because they realize that just is not the direction they want to go. They realize that whether a drug is legal or illegal, your body does not forget. You abuse your body. You know, I have enough trouble with my cholesterol, by the way. Uh, I, I, I have enough trouble doing that. In fact, I would go so far as to say, you're concerned about what you put into your body? You're concerned about putting harmful substances into your body? I think that French fried potatoes, potato chips, and chocolate chip cookies are something that are addictive and harmful for your health. How many of you agree with me? How many of you believe that we should make chocolate chip cookies, French fried potatoes, and uh, French and uh, potato chips illegal in our country? No take. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> you know? Anything else we're doing. You know, okay. Fair enough. You sure convinced me. But there's only so much we can do as a government to protect people from themselves. I mean, I'm convinced that chainsaws are illegal. No question of it. Baseball bats are illegal, but they have some good benefits and, of course, some harms. But when it comes down to it, the government is not our mother. The government isn't our parent. And we're going to have to make our own decisions. And I think that our children are going to understand that as well. In fact, I'm going to talk to you for a moment about Switzerland. This is something really, really important and really successful. Switzerland has a problem that most countries in the world regretfully do not have. Namely, pretty much all of the towns and cities in Switzerland are economically pretty well off. They don't have any barrios, slums, down and out areas, whatever you want to call them, because economically they're, they're pretty, pretty well off. But they do have heroin addicted people. And in Switzerland, if you have, you know, a lot of people that are using heroin, honestly, they use it responsibly. Not that it's smart, but they use it responsibly and they don't, they're not, you know, down and out and lying in the gutters. But there are always some people, the stereotypes, that yes, they're lying in the gutters, they're unsightly, they smell, you know, they're a nuisance. And in Switzerland, you can't kind of shove these people off into the barrios or the down and out areas because there aren't any, so they're a lot more unsightly and you can't hide them. So Switzerland, in the middle 1990s, put in a pilot program for three years in seven cities. What happened is that they would put a medical clinic in those seven cities in the areas in which the heroin-addicted people would mostly be found. And it was staffed by a, by a group of three people, a medical doctor, a registered nurse, and a social worker. What would these people do? They'd go out into the heroin-using community. They would bring heroin-addicted people into the clinics. And then what would they do? Same thing you or I would do. They would give them drug treatment, or at least offer it. But as a practical matter, most people that use or are addicted to heroin either don't think they can get off their drug or they don't want to. So they'd look at them and say, okay, if you can satisfy three criteria, we have a program for you. The criteria are, number one, you're at least 22 years of age and have failed traditional drug treatment at least twice. 
Number two, you are addicted to heroin. Not that hard to prove. And number three, that in the future, you will be and remain crime free. Okay? If these people could convince the staff that they would satisfy those criteria, they would be placed on the program. What does that mean? They would be given a prescription for heroin. They could take it to their local pharmacies and have it filled at pharmaceutical prices, then bring it to the clinic and actually inject their heroin under medically controlled circumstances at the clinic. Now, stop for a minute. None of these drugs we can discuss is expensive. The only reason any of them is expensive is because they're illegal. I mean, they don't call marijuana a weed for nothing. It'll grow anywhere. It's cheap. They don't call the opium poppy, by the way, is a beautiful flower. It's used to make, make a, a heroin. But, of course, the DEA would have you believe that it'll only grow in the mountainous regions of Colombia or something like that. Nonsense. The National Park Service was growing the opium poppy at Monticello for years. Once again, it's a beautiful flower. But until the DEA found out about it and made them take it out. But I assure you that if, if it will grow in Virginia, it will grow anywhere. Number two, this is not a so-called orgy of heroin usage. That is, remember, there is a medical doctor on the team. And the medical doctor would give these people a blood test and figure out what the strength of their habit is. And so the amount of their heroin that they would be using wouldn't be enough to give them that surge or that, that uh, euphoria or whatever that would be. It was not enough for that, but it was too much to allow them to go with, through with it would maintain them at their current level. Hence, by the way, the program is called a heroin maintenance program. Now, what happened? The, remember, this was a three-year pilot program. The Minister of Health held a press conference less than a year after they began and said, wait a minute, we're not going to wait a full three years. We're going to expand this program to every city in Switzerland where there's a need. Why? Because of the amazing benefits we have seen that have come out of this program. What have they seen? Number one, crime in the neighborhoods surrounding the clinics plummeted. Now wait a minute, what's the connection here? Well, upon a little analysis, what does a person that's heroin addicted do in our society or previously in theirs to support their habit? Burglarize your house? Burglarize your car? hit you over the head at the ATM when you're getting money out, check offenses. But remember, if they're even arrested, they're off the program. And if they're off the program, I mean, you can't imagine. If you have a $200 a day heroin or cocaine problem or whatever, and you're a burglar, that means you're going to have to go out and burglarize somewhere around $2,000 a day of our property in order to take it to a fence to get 10% which would then result in your having your $200 every day, then finding your connection, seemingly they would have the heroin or whatever else. It takes a lot of work. And so if they're even arrested, they're behind the eight ball, they have to go back to this hustle, they, they don't want to do that, and they stay away from crime. To the degree that the merchants and the neighbors surrounding the clinics experienced a sevenfold decrease in shoplifting, they were very pleased. Crime has gone 